Well, a flash flood watch that has been effect for area has been canceled. It is still in effect for up into the Charleston area, but for us, we do not, we're no longer under a flash flood watch. That just happened a few moments ago, but there still are some pockets of heavy rain. I'm going to show you that. As we look at your satellite and radar, you can see a lot of bright white clouds building up here along the coastal counties as well as south and all the way down into Florida. And that obviously resulted in some very heavy rain this afternoon. Now we are seeing a few storms firing up here south around Alma and Blackshear. Further north, the rain has been on a decreasing trend and that's why the flash flood watch for this area has expired or been canceled. But you still have some light to moderate rain running from Savannah out to the islands. But definitely better than earlier. The ponding of water getting better, but still there's some out there, so use extra caution if you're driving out and about as we head through the beginning of the evening. Pembroke, we had some very heavy rain. That has diminished, and now it's all dry, so things will improve there. Further south, we had some heavy rain near Darien, but that's all heading south and weakening. But one spot that we're seeing a bit of a flare up here, some very heavy rain going from Pierce County up through portions of Bacon County, and that's also heading up into Applin County. And notice there's a lot of lightning we're tracking with that as well. With this, there is a flood advisory in effect now for the southeast portion of Bacon County as well as Pierce County until 730. A flood advisory means that minor flooding of streets it has a good chance of that, so keep that in mind if you're traveling in those areas. There will be a fair amount of ponding of water there. Let's take a look at what's happening then for the overnight. Our model forecast is showing improvement as we head through the night in many spots. Again, we'll track some of those storms in the southwest part of our area, but closer to the coast, things will be getting better. We head to daybreak. We're going to have a mix of sun and clouds at 7 a.m. And tomorrow, we'll have a chance for a shower or storm during the afternoon, but it should be less numerous than today. But there will again be a chance for some locally heavy downpours and spots that do see a shower or storm during the afternoon. I want to show you quickly. This is Hurricane Edward. We were tracking this system last week and as expected, it is staying far out to sea, but you can see it has a well defined eye there. It's going to be zipping east of Bermuda and then heading to the northeast and eventually weakening as it heads toward colder water. There's a slight chance that we could see a little bit of a risk of Increased risk of rip currents along the coast here by late Wednesday. So we'll track that and monitor that for you as we head through the next couple of days. Now we check a look at your forecast for tomorrow. 72 with a mix of clouds and sun in the morning. Then we're up to 88 in the afternoon. Possible shower or storm. Your tides uh, will include a high tide next at 2.30 in the morning. There won't be any rain around with that, so no problems there. Out on the water, we'll see seas running at 2 to perhaps 3 feet through Thursday. And we'll look at your pollen reports. We've got weed pollen, grass pollen moderate, and mold is showing up as high. Next weekend, here's an early look, and it appears to me that we'll have a possible shower on Saturday with a high of 84. That would be behind the cold front. Sunday looks dry right now, the high of 86. We'll continue to fine tune that forecast as we get closer. Your entire storm tracker seven day showing that we should have dry weather Wednesday and Thursday before that next cold front gives us a chance for a storm coming up on Friday and then possibly that lingering shower chance on Saturday.